Hi, this is Jeff. Having joined the social media crowd here in the last few years, I was very surprised to see that there was a large segment of the deer hunting crowd who very strongly and aggressively believe that deer meat should never be allowed to get wet. Now, I'd never heard of such, and I was shocked at the statements, mainly due to the fact that I have been soaking my deer meat in an ice bath for over 25 years, and it's always been delicious. And I'm a guy who, like most people I know, do not enjoy a strong, gamey flavor. Now, because the subject was so polarizing, I thought that a scientific experiment was in order. So, what I did was, I went out and killed a white-tailed doe from the Texas Panhandle. And here she is. This doe was two and a half years old and was shot nice and cleanly behind the shoulder. Now, the difficult thing in any experiment is isolating the variable that you want to test. We want to know how the quality of the meat is affected by either being kept dry or by soaking in an ice bath. So what that means is that everything else must be treated the same. Therefore, I use this single dough. I put half in an ice bath, the other half I kept dry. I, uh, at the urging of some guys who typically do drying, told me you can't put the meat, you can't leave the meat in the bags. It'll spoil the meat. Now, I asked for some biological explanation as to what exactly happens to the meat. A lot of their answers were, it has to breathe. Um... So I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can, man, okay? Anyway, <clears throat> so, note, no bags, up out of the ice, out of the water, sitting on a rack. And my wife, she I wouldn't say she was upset, but she did inquire as to what happened to her dish rack. This still contains just the ice bath, which there's meat right there which I need to get some more water. And I drained it off while I go, and I just hadn't filled it back up yet. Whew. Okay, so, here we are. Note, that has stayed, except for the snow getting on it right now, it's snowing. <clears throat> Other than the snow, that has been dry for a week now. I was going to do 10 days, but it turns out I forgot. I forgot and I have to work this weekend. Now, here's our uh, wet. Hoping you can see that, right? Note it is wet. Note it is bloody. We're going to drag this out here to the curb and drain it. Woo, that's cold. Drag this out here to the curb and drain it right quick. I guess that's it. There we go. Just looks like a Kool-Aid. So when the meat's gonna come out looking gray, and that's what a lot of people complain about. They go, "Oh, look at that! Ooh, that's nasty looking." Well, all it's done is just some. It's taking blood in whatever form. Okay, it's taking blood out of the meat, and you'll see I'm draining it down the down the curb here, and that'll do for our purposes. Who first? Let's go. Uh, just because my hands feel frozen, <laughs> I can't feel them. Let's start with the uh, hind quarter of the dry age. So. Now, I will say I like working with the dry better. It doesn't feel as, just not as slippery, you know? So, you guys that whine about the wet aging, changing the color of the meat, I mean, this was dry aged, and instead of being gray, it just kind of went brown. <laughs> it smells okay, but man, it makes me suspicious. No, I didn't say anything about that. Now, everything was cut and trimmed the same. I will say that the dry handles much better, so not so slippery or sloppy. However, it wasn't until I cut up the meat from the ice bath that I realized how much colder it was than the dry, and I mean really cold. Finally, it was all wrapped in butcher paper and placed in the freezer until May. 
Well, today is the big day doing the venison taste test of meat aged in an ice bath or dry. Uh, it's the same dough with all the same cuts, just half them all. This is, uh, as you can see, BBQ1. This will be pulled. Ooh, doesn't that look delicious? Those of you who know who do your own meat processing will recognize that cut of meat as the rump roast. Here is a BBQ2. Note, same cut, same preparation, same seasoning. Deer was processed the same, all from the same deer. And then here we have NPR. What's NPR? Mississippi Pot Roast. Mississippi Pot Roast. Ooh. That is the uh, round. You recognize this as the same cut. Also the round. There you have it. NPR 2. NPR number 1. And now here they are <clears throat> all seasoned up. Just uh, seasoned salt pepper with uh, some coarse uh, sea salt and just a slight uh, sprinkling of garlic powder. The rest, uh, the mesquite wood will do the rest. Okay, just doing a little pulled barbecue here on this rump roast. This was, which one was this one, Mindy? That was in the ice bath. This is ice bath. Look at that, it's just falling apart. Nice, nice. All right, and now here is the uh, dry that's gonna be barbecue. We'll just kind of pull it. No, it is not. Hmm. It is not coming apart here as well. In fact, I can't do that one-handed. Well, score one for the ice bath at the moment. Every few years, our neighborhood likes to have a little block party on Memorial Day. And I thought, what a great opportunity to have a blind taste test. Now, I got a little busy conducting the experiment while also grilling out hot dogs and hamburgers, and I failed to video of the event. But there were 28 of our neighbors who agreed to participate, none of whom were regular venison eaters and several who never had it before. Oddly, there were some at the event who refused to take part because the venison they had tried in the past was bad, and they swore to never try it again most likely because the meat they had tried had not been properly cared for. Now, the participants were offered two sets of three different dishes, six dishes total. Each of the sets was only labeled number one or number two, so they had no clue which dish was ice bath or dry. The dishes were one, pulled barbecue, two, Mississippi pot roast, and three, grilled backstrap cooked medium rare. Now we had them complete simple questionnaires as to the quality of each dish and to rank each one on a scale of one to six. First, they were asked to consider flavor where a score of one was strong and very gamey and a score of six was delicious, not gamey at all and could have been beef. The second criteria was tenderness where a score of one was very tough, can't hardly chew it, and a score of six was melt in your mouth. Finally, we asked them to consider overall quality by selecting their favorite of each dish. And here are the results. As you can see, there's no need to go splitting hairs over one scoring higher than the other, as the margins between the dry and ice bath are minuscule and swap back and forth between dishes. Most everyone loved all the dishes, and Mindy and I received multitudes of compliments. On the question of which was their favorite of each dish, I grouped all the participants' answers into ice bath or dry so as to increase the sample size. And you can see, yet again, 
that both techniques result in equally delicious venison. The take home message is this, it doesn't matter. Do what works good for your situation, cease and desist the perpetuation of old wives tales, go hunt, feed your families, and love life. <laughs> Any point of view, so you see how sad you are. <laughs> Come on.